Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run over me. Hi, this is Jan Lewis. Welcome to be my guest today. We have Susan Hamilton with us, and she is an author. She writes dark fantasy, and her book today is called Shadow King, a dark fantasy tale. Who designed the cover? The cover was designed by a woman actually I used to work with yeah. named Charlene McGuire, yeah. and she's a graphic designer and artist, and she moved out to California to pursue art um, as a more of a full-time role, and we stayed in touch and connected for this. And Well, she did a beautiful job. Thank you. I like he reminds me a little bit of Mr. Spock from Star, from Star Trek. <laughs> so you you did you published it not necessarily you didn't do it self publishing you did it through an organization. Yes. Okay. How long did it take you to write? This is a juicy book. This is this is, this is a fat one. How long did it take you? Um, to do the first the very first draft I actually did as part of the NaNoWriMo competition. Mm -hmm. Um, and for your viewers who may not know that, it's National Novel Writing Month and they run a competition each year where the goal is to write a 50,000 word rough draft in 30 days. And it's, um, oh my it can be challenging with Thanksgiving in there because that usually loses about three days for me. <laughs> but you did it, right? But I did it. Was it this? Mm -hmm. Was it this? I'm getting a signal here. What are you trying to tell me? What, <laughs> what you, oh, I see, okay. You know the little strings that'll hang up your shirt? It's oh. peeking through. Mustn't have that right. All right, now, ambition, betrayal, revenge. Without giving away the ending, what's the story about? The story is the realm of fairy has been destroyed. Yeah. Um, and all the fairies we know from folklore now live here in our world with us. And it's not a secret society. They are with us every day. You could go to Dunkin' Donuts and be served by a leprechaun. And you'd know it was a leprechaun. Mm -hmm. And... Aidan Collins, my ma male lead character, runs Boston's criminal underworld. And he is one of the dark fairies. Now, is he this fellow on yes. the cover? Okay. Beautiful drawing. My gosh. Thank you. Um, and he lives a playboy lifestyle. He's very successful at his criminal undertakings, lives a playboy lifestyle, uh, and has continued to build his empire in the shadows. Mm -hmm. He crosses paths with Sheridan Moore, who is a face seer, mm -hmm. and she has been searching for the person responsible not only for the complete desolation of fairy, but this, that same person is responsible for the death of her parents. Right, they murdered her family. Yes, so she's been looking for that person. She doesn't know exactly who it is. She's seen them in a vision um, and has an idea of who it is, but it hasn't found them. Right. Uh, they cross paths, and despite her better judgment, knowing that Aiden is probably a lot of trouble and, and maybe not the best person to get involved with, she really can't resist his charm and magnetism. She got pulled into the underworld. Yes, pulled into his world. Yeah. And she realizes, as their relationship intensifies, that he could be the key to finding this person because he's got so many connections yeah. that it's very likely he could help her find who this person is. Sure. But is revenge potentially worth betraying the person she loves to get what she wants? And that's the that's what she gets faced with at the, the Weird, crux of the story. How did you ever come up with this great idea? Um, the initial idea, oddly enough, was when I was trying to come up with an idea for the NaNoWriMo competition. Yeah. It was about 24 hours before it started. It was literally at the end yeah. of October. I had no ideas. I was out raking leaves with my husband, just going, you, I've got nothing. <laughs> For the competition, yeah. and I was like, "Well, I, you know, I've always liked folklore and fairy tales, and could I do something with that?" And then I thought, "Well, if, if the fairies lived with us, what would they do?" And yeah. I thought, "Well, the light fairies, like you see in like Lord of the Rings and, yeah. and things like that, they would be the celebrities and the rock stars because they're yeah. always portrayed as tall and beautiful and elegant, oh, and yeah. they would be they'd be living in Hollywood and yeah. and places like that." I said, "But what would the dark fairies do?" I said, "Well." they'd probably be criminals. They'd probably yeah. be part of the mafia or whatever criminal organization yeah. was a applicable. Sure. And I went, wait a minute. That's an idea. Yeah. And I said, well, and, and I could have this character who like ran Boston's underworld. 
And I literally, I put the rake down, I dropped the leaf bag, I went back in the house. How long did it take you to do this? To write that, that, now, now that for that, that the event? What, how long? Uh, meaning how long for the draft? Yep. Well, the draft itself I completed in the 30 days, I, and it was like the very last day. Yeah. But that first day right before it started, I went in, I wrote like a, a page of handwritten notes and just left it on the computer so I wouldn't forget what my idea was. Handwritten? Only that, only that okay. first set of notes. Yeah. Then I went back outside because I thought it was unfair to leave my husband with the rest <laughs> of the yard work while I started <laughs> writing. Yeah. But I didn't want to lose the idea, so yeah. when I was able to come in and start to think about it, then I opened up the computer and was like, I think there's something here. Yeah. And it was the first idea I'd gotten excited about in a while. Yeah. Well, you had two other books. I didn't know this. Dark Star Rising and The Devil Inside. Yes. Uh, Dark Where are they? Dark Star Rising, I... I wrote a draft of that, the original draft of that, in college, um, and it took many, many years to get it to be completed. Uh, and I, I ended up self-publishing back in about 2003, because yeah. uh, I couldn't get any traction with um, the traditional publishing, but it was when print on demand was really coming out. Yeah. And suddenly that opened a whole new world, because you didn't have to contract with a small press mm -hmm. and commit to buying yep. like 3,000 books because you know, A, it was expensive and B, where am I going to store 3,000 books? Mm -hmm. th that takes up a lot more room than people think it does. Yeah. <laughs> but with print on demand, yeah. you could print 5,000 or you could print two. Yeah. And I was like... How much would it cost? How much, um, let's say you order 2,000, how much would that be? It depends on the size of the, the bigger the book, the more expensive because the more raw materials are used. Okay, we're, we're but a little smaller than this, maybe just. Mm -hmm. That would probably be. She could say she's. Yeah, I'm not. I, that's why I'm a writer. I can't do. <laughs> I can't do <laughs> The silence here with the um, mouth. <laughs> But yeah, even if it was at, at $10 a, yeah. a shot. Yeah. Um, $10 times 2,000 books. <laughs> so yeah. That's 20,000 bucks. Right. So, but with print on demand, yeah. I don't have to commit to that oh. many. And what's it called? Create Space? Uh, I actually did Dark Star through um, Ex Libris. How were they? Uh, I enjoyed yeah. my experience with them. They had a lot of different package levels that I could choose from. Yeah. So I. I was able to find one that gave me enough control over the yeah. creativity part of it and the layout and the right. cover. Um, it wasn't dirt cheap, but I mean, as I jokingly said to my husband, uh, we probably could have bought a really, really nice dining room set. Oh. For, uh, <laughs> for he took it okay though, right? Yeah, no, actually he was the one who suggested I pursue the self-publishing part. Which How many years ago did you start writing? I started, well, I used to write a bit when I was little, mm -hmm. um, and then I took a break, and one of the reasons I took a break was I was always one of those kids that was curious about so many things that once my curiosity was satisfied, if I didn't feel like there was a lot of enthusiasm for it around me, yeah. I was like, okay, curiosity satisfied, what's next? Yeah. Um, I'd like to learn about this now. That's exactly what happened to me. My mother said to me, if you have a bee in your bonnet, you better go do it. Yep. Yes, I was exactly like that. Yep. yep. So I would do some writing, and my grandmother was a reading teacher, so I, oh. I wrote, so I, I read and wrote fairly early. Um, and I wrote a story about ponies, because I've always ridden horses. Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, as any young girl, I was obsessed with horses and ponies, and mm -hmm. that's what I wrote about. Yeah. And I remember I, probably about, seven or eight years old, probably eight, mm -hmm. I wrote a story you know, and handwritten out um, in a notebook and I showed it to my grandmother. It was, I'm guessing it was probably about 10 pages, which for an eight-year-old was like forever. And she was like, oh, that's nice and didn't really react to it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, okay yeah, on mm -hmm. to the next thing I'm curious about. And yeah. years later, after I'd written Dark Star, which I did in college, yeah. um, she... She said, oh, I remember this, this story you wrote when you were little. It was about ponies, and it was marvelous. So she came up with it all of a sudden. And I said, well, you didn't seem very excited about it back then. Yeah. 
And she said, well, I, I thought it was too good for a child your age, and I was afraid you'd copied it, and I didn't want to encourage that. Oh, my gosh. Did you tell her, no, Grandma, that's mine? <laughs> and I laughed, and I said, well, well, thank you for the, the vote on my, you know, my moral upbringing. <laughs> oh. And she laughed, and she just... So and you set her straight? Yes. That, that was yes. your writing. Yes, it was my writing. <laughs> were you, now, were you the only kid in the family who wrote? Yes, I'm an only child. You're an so, only child. Yep. Yeah, so that, you, this is great. So you had all that focus on... Yes. All right, so Dark Star Rising was your first one. Yep. Was that also a, a dark fantasy? Uh, no, it is more high fantasy, more in the tradition of like Lord of the Rings okay. type of thing. And Devil Inside. The okay. Devil Inside is forthcoming from Inkshares. It's uh, in the production queue right now. Oh! And okay. will be hopefully out by this time next year. We'll have her back on. <laughs> so this is... So the next one is coming up. This is the second book. Yes. The, uh, Rising was the first, Dark Star Rising. The Devil Inside will be coming out yes. next, early this coming year, right? New Year? Uh, hopefully it will be with the editor mm -hmm. early in the spring, which means it will release hopefully in the fall. Okay, well, about a year from now? Yeah, but I won't have a release date until the editor actually gets their hands on it. Oh my gosh. Now, after that, I, so many authors have something else going on. Any trilogies coming up or anything like that? Um, not sure. The The next project I want to work on is a follow-up to Shadow King. Oh, okay. Um, I have yeah. probably about 10 pages of notes for it. My plan was to do a draft for NaNoWriMo this year, right. um, but I got a little a little derailed. Our, our cat uh, ended up having surgery oh. at the start of the month, and she's fine, and she's recovering very, very well, but that just, it took up a lot of time and attention, and I said... I'll have to do my own right. personal NaNoWriMo later on. But so she's your cat, your, your kid, your yep. child. Yep. I know we have two cats, and they are like kids. Yeah, and she's almost 17, so she's a little older. So she, yeah. she's, uh, she's up there. Did so you adopt her? Yes. Yeah, we adopted our yep. cats too. Oh, gosh. Now, yep. how can they reach you to get a copy of Shadow King? Uh, Shadow King is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, any online retailer, you can ask for it also at your local bookseller. Uh, some may have it on the shelves, but they may also have to order it, but you can certainly get it if you'd like to frequent a bookseller. Um, and those are probably the primary places to And also, to come on it. downstairs to the Upton Town Library. Yes. You can grab a copy there, too. But is revenge worth betraying the one she loves? I love this. <laughs> and she falls in love with this guy who's, the, you know, the underground, under the bad underworld fairy type, right? Mm -hmm. and I, <laughs> I don't where you came in the names, Sir Aiden and our Ode. Oh, how did you come up with those names? Um, I wanted my main set of fairies in the book to have connections to Irish folklore, so I looked at a lot of Gaelic names. Okay, that's and what Irish it is. names. Yeah. Um, and so, in some cases, I stuck with traditional pronunciations, and in some cases, I went. There's a little. There's a list of characters in the back with how to pronounce their names. Yeah. Um, in some cases, I went with more phonetic spellings as opposed to traditional Irish ones. Okay. Um, but I also tried to pick ones that people could sound out yeah. if they felt like some some Irish names just you look at them and the pronunciations are so different right. that it's hard to figure out what it might say. So Aiden, yeah. It could be Aiden, yeah. Aodin. But if somebody yeah. says Aiden, like mm -hmm. just regular Aiden name, it's yeah. it works. I've heard it, nowadays. I've heard little boys named Aiden. Mm -hmm. That I missed this part. The major characters listed on the back, and they're they're, Kel they're Celtic um, and Irish interpretation. Collins is very Irish. We had that in my uh, husband's family. Mm -hmm. Collins. Oh, you must that the research that you had to do with these. There's some, there's some work <laughs> right there. Now, do you think you're going to stick to this this genre? Do you think, could you see something else? You're curious like I am. You think, I think I'm going to try a whole different genre. Um, I wouldn't rule anything out, but I've always had a soft spot for fantasy in my reading. Yeah. And I like to read a lot of different things, yeah. but um, if I got an idea that took me in a different direction, I would certainly pursue it. Horses? You'll probably see them incorporated in there somewhere. Uh, yeah, for the yeah. right genre, um, Dark Star Rising actually. One of, there's a horse that is. It's the horse of one of the major characters, but he shows up fairly frequently with a personality of his own. So if there's, if there's an excuse to have a horse in there, I will probably have it. There aren't too many since in Shadow King, since it takes place in, in Boston. 
We're talking to Susan Hamilton, and she is the author of Dark Fantasy, Shadow King. Just the, just the cover itself gives you like, ooh, <laughs> that's in your face. Now, I like the fact that you had say over what was on the cover. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of people who are more into self-publishing, I kind of encourage that. This is going to give you, you know what you want to feel, have mm -hmm. what we feel looking at your book. Yes. You know. Yep. And you did a great job. Was, were your other two books anything like this with the covers? Uh, yes, actually, um, Charlene has done all three of my covers. Gosh. Um, the, the Dark Star one, since it was so many years ago, um, she has matured as an artist as I have matured as a writer. Mm -hmm. But it's a, you'll, you'll notice a very similar style on it. Sure. Um, for The Devil Inside, we did a little more work with using a, um, a stock photo and adapting that to be meaningful to what people will read in the story. Exactly. Now, you have been, uh, you've appeared at Tatnuck? Yes. Okay. When was that? That was at the start of October, right around when the book launched. Okay, that Tatnuck right up the street in Westboro. Yep. Those are people out of the country don't know what I'm talking about, but... And you were in Boston, you said? Where, where were you after that? You were somewhere else. I did uh, another a book signing at uh, Belmont Books in Belmont, Massachusetts. In Belmont. Which That's is a lovely little store. Okay, because I think I'd heard something about that bookstore that was really positive, and now you're, you're probably putting the top on the lid, the lid on mm -hmm. the whatever here. Okay, so I've got to remember that, the Belmont. Yes. What's coming up for you? Uh, the next event I will be at right now, I'm planning to be at the Aresia Sci-Fi Convention in January in Boston. Mm -hmm. Aresia, how do you, what, how do you spell that? A-R-I-S-I-A. What does it mean? Air, American? I, I don't know what it stands for. Um, it's always been the Aresia Convention. Aresia uh, Convention. And where's that going to be? It is, has actually just moved to the Park Plaza Hotel. They had to change hotels. In Boston? In Boston. And what day? I would have to look that up. Okay, I apologize. Because you're going to be there. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay because you know what? People can look it up. Yes. And they, you can meet her if you go there. Yes. And uh, you had never been to the Danversport one, right? No. I just told her about that and the one coming up in Rhode Island. Yes, I will definitely be looking into those. Yeah, that we're going to be there. I've never been to the one in Rhode Island, but I have met so many authors from Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. Plus, um, do you know Steve Porter? He is the owner of the uh, Stillwater... No. Book publishing company? No, I do not. He um, he's also an author, and he's been with us a number of times, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be there too. Great. But, but I've seen the picture online. If you go on, I don't know where all I found it, but it looks like a, it's just a squib of a humongous room. And I I think it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it sounds very interesting. From here, Cranston, about 45 minutes. Probably. Right Okay. I got directions from Steve Porter. If you want, just email me. Let me know, and okay. I'll send you what he sent me. Sounds great. Yeah. Uh, we don't use a GPS. I like, I'm like my dad. I grew up with maps, and Dad would actually write out, you will see this. Did I do that for you? I oh, yes. You will see this, too. So you feel nice and comfy. Okay, I went by this and all this. That's how I, I think. I think a lot of people from New England give directions that way. God. Because I usually do it. This is, this is so popular now, especially, I have to say, my son's age group, the millennials, right, and even a little younger, this fantasy, dark fantasy, is becoming very popular. Yes. I mean, the mother of my two little baby grandchildren loves this type of thing. In fact, she's getting this, this copy for Christmas, and thanks to Susan, and I'm going to pass along to her, and she's going to be wide-eyed when she opens this, because it's, <laughs> it's just right. I mean, as soon as I saw the cover, I said, that's Chelsea. She will love it. Good. We take her to the beach. She had her nose buried in fantasy. That's what she loves. Um, it's just the right size for her, too, because she, she'll read a thick book. She re Do you see a lot of the kids of the millennials coming up to you and saying, wow, I love that book. Can I have it? Uh, not so far. Believe me. <laughs> the more you can get the word out. Yes, but I, I've only had a couple... Yeah public appearances. So I'm hoping that oh. Aresia should be, since it's the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, right. and it caters more to the fantasy element, whereas BossCon mm -hmm. tends to skew a little more sci-fi based. Mm -hmm. At least that used to be my experience, so I would have to just double check on that. But right, because I know that um, at, the, at the big one in uh, Danversport, you fit right in because I've never seen anything 
that, that look like this, and then they have all the different genres. Mm -hmm. I don't see anybody that looks alike at book. That's what I love at the book fairs. Mm -hmm. I can go from one table, and that's one genre, to the next. It's totally different. You can just wander around and talk to the authors, mm -hmm. get their business cards, right? Um, I always tell my authors, I say, don't worry if you don't sell more than a book or two or whatever. It's okay. Bring someone with you, mm -hmm. so that not just so that you can go to the John and they watch your table, but so that you can walk around with your book like this and start meeting other people, not just the people mm -hmm. coming in, but the other authors. Yes. Because you never know who they might have a contact who would love to have you speak. Mm -hmm. I say, so don't lose heart if you didn't sell anything just that time. Believe me, all the contacts you make Abs are yes. like jewels in the crown. Yep. They really are. So I think that they, they're a little bit afraid and that type of thing. I say, not to worry. It doesn't mean your book is bad. Mm -hmm. Just take advantage of all these people and their free cards. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've, met a, I've met a lot of wonderful authors through InkShares, the publisher that published yeah. this. And yeah. I've actually... Uh, a bunch of us got together, and we have an anthology of short stories coming out. It's a uh, pre-sale right now, yeah. and I think the ebook will be released in January. So it was a great opportunity to get involved in that, and they've been wonderful and supportive. If you go online and you look at, you know, meetup groups, meetup mm -hmm. groups, you can just go down and see. I know they have, I think, fantasy enthusiasts, dark, dark fantasy, all that type of thing, and that's another idea too. They would probably go gaga over this. I'm serious. It's really good. Good. I'm so glad. Well, before we close, again, how can people get a hold of your book? They can find it uh, at any of the online retailers, uh, Amazon, Barnes yeah. & Noble, uh, IndieBound. Uh, or you can go to your library and ask for it, or you can go to your local bookseller and ask for it. Uh, and I would actually encourage people to go to their local book retailers. Cause now, Tatnock has a copy, right? Uh, yes, they have several copies, and Belmont has several copies. Belmont, okay. Barnes & Noble yet? They're kind of funny about taking authors. <gasps> yeah, I'm probably not going to be on the shelves in Barnes & Noble just because of the volume they sell, and it's it's not yet on a bestseller list. That's um, okay. <laughs> but that's okay. But if you go to them and ask at the customer services, they absolutely can access, yeah, access it to it. order it and have it come into their store where you can pick it up. Now, if people would like you to come and speak, I mean, there's so many people out there that know the millen this millennial generation. They are gaga. They love this. And even just a little bit younger. Where are you open to going to speak? Uh, I'd be open to going anywhere. I mean, the getting out to California might be a little... Challenging. I New would England love, is good. I would love to go, but yes, anywhere in New England, I would be happy to get right. to if I can. That's what I always ask an author. I'll, before I send you referrals, <laughs> where you want to go? Some people don't want to go too far. Mm -hmm. and that's okay. Others like just take me throughout New England. Yep. Yeah, you know, just just take me there, which is good. I mean, if I'm not a traveler, but if they are, <laughs> you go for it. Yes. And they enjoy it. They have a fun time. You know, I don't know. But this has been great. Now, you think that uh, by this time next year, your new one will be out? I am hoping. The Devil Inside. you got to let me know. I will. All right, we'll have you on again. Susan, thanks for being with us. Oh, thank you for having me. I really enjoyed we'll that talk. We'll see you again. See you next time. I'll be my guest. <laughs>